Like I said, this is episode 371. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest HeroClick singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Chad, you recently won a tournament in some hick state somewhere in America. We're going to go ahead, get to know you a little bit first, and then do this. So, Chad, why... Why on earth would you decide to play this this game? Uh, bad life choices. Uh, bad horrible, life choices. Horrible life. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I, turtles. Turtles uh, is literally the only reason I started to play HeroClix. So, is, so you you didn't start playing until was that 2015? Then is that the first turtles set? I think so. I'm checking. Uh, 2016 is, is 2016. The first turtles. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It looks like April, if if this website is correct. I guess and it makes I sense. I know the number four. Number four is they, definitely April. Yeah, you're no, you're right. You're right. Um, you can pass that. That was a correct answer. So Chad will get a pretty high score there for knowing which month is April. Uh, at the end of the the end of the show, we'll, we'll tally them all up. Are so, we gonna, whose line is this anyway? This game? Like... Maybe we'll see. Okay. We'll see how it goes. This is pretty off the cuff um, show, honestly. Chad, who's your favorite turtle? Uh, Raph. Why is how, would Raph it, how would it be anybody else? Well, so I, I am partial to Raphael. I do like him. He's no Leonardo, but I understand why people don't like the other turtles. Donat. So sorry, sorry. Before I say anything else, who who is the worst turtle? Leo. Why you say why say Leo? Why is that? Leo's just uh, just. All up in himself. Like, I have to be the best, and I have to set the example, and I can't actually have a personality other than what Master Splinter wants me to be. That Except is, for in okay. the new series. Like, do you read the, the current TMT series? I, I'm gonna, this is, you might not like this. I've never read a Ninja Turtles comic book. I am, uh, I'm purely like the 90s movie, um, the 2003 show, I believe, is what I grew up with. And then I watched some of the 80s show, um, and I haven't even watched the 2012 Turtles, if I'm being real with you, or yeah. Rise. Um, but yeah. Rise doesn't look good. So The new one is is just a bag of terrible, just uh, childhood destruction, basically. I believe it. Um, and they changed Raph's character to be Leo's character in that one too. So I, I don't well, think he's not Leo's fan. character. Like he's still, but he's the he's leader, still, right? He's still Raphael. Raph. Yeah, yeah, he's still, he's still the same Raph personality. They just made him the leader, and his personality that that's not a leader. You can't, you can't take that and just be like, okay, this is a leader now. It's like when Wolverine leads a team, and it's like, ah, I don't really know. I don't think he's qualified, guys. Sorry. It depends on the age of Wolverine because that is true. Old man. Old Man Logan is one of my favorite Marvel runs. And then it ends ends with Dead Man Logan, which is just fantastic if you haven't read that. (laughs) I have not. I, um, I see it like the main Old Man Logan story. I read that one and then I read the one where he gets time displaced or whatever, that Old Man Logan title, when he just is in our universe and then he's, uh, checking off his list of people that he didn't like in his universe and he takes care of them here, which is interesting. Yeah. I, I love the old man Logan storyline. I think we're getting really off, off, uh, off hero clicks here, but what did you think about the two old man Logans we have in hero clicks? Uh, I honestly, I really liked the second one. I actually played the second one, uh, on a team because of everything that he did. Yeah. I like, so he gives everybody in power or combat reflexes or something like that, right? Uh, he like, gives everybody combat reflexes. Combat I think reflexes. It is. Uh, combat reflexes, and if they already had it, they got plus one defense. That's so I had him, I had him on a, like a Wolverine swarm team with 
a bunch of Wolverines, Lila Cheney, a bunch of Mud Men, and like you, you can't hit the Mud Men at that point even more than you can't hit them normally. Yeah. So I actually played that slightly, slightly different. But that's because I'm a big Captain America fan. I played that in a Batch Rock team. So a bunch of the ADW Batch Rocks, the ones that could do a, an attack. Zilipia. They had a token. Zilipia. Yeah. So I loved that. I love that team. Uh, awesome. What's your favorite HeroClix version of Raphael? Uh, I mean, the same, the answer is, is the same for all the turtles. It's, it's the, the black and white, like, yeah, they're just super good versions that in my mind represent what a turtle's going to do. Nowadays, they're way over pointed. Like they should basically be free. (laughs) (laughs) 75. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I think, uh, didn't somebody win with those? I think like not in America, but like someone in like, South of the border, won like a nationals with like Raphael and Michelangelo think, or something like that. I think Krang was the winner out of that series, though. Oh, like, uh, yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Is there? Do you? Is the first turtle set your favorite or my favorite set? Like yeah, period? favorite favorite set period, and then favorite turtle set. Favorite turtle set is is probably Shredder's Return because the Shredders were just beyond good and then it had a lot of other characters i really like in it um of course we got a fugitoid because every set had to have a fugitoid uh because you know that's just how it is but we got well, Savante yeah. Rider- romero we got worm worm was awesome um we got lord drag it's not the lord drag version that i would have preferred but i mean we still got him and then you got the space turtles in it which again just fun because I played, uh, I played an animal team that used that Michelangelo like, like craziness, like craziness. Mm. Yeah. I like those space turtles. I do say those were, I, I obviously didn't watch the show, but I mean, I do, I did really enjoy those space turtles. And Leo, did they all have the ability to remove equipment or was that just Leo's? But just like that Leo. was the, okay. So yeah, that's why I was pretty big on that one. Um, and then my favorite set ever, I, I think it's gotta be, it's the set like, where I started going big into clicks because I wasn't like always just like I'm gonna spend all my money on this game. Um, but it, it's the Mighty Thor. Like that's when it was started to be like, no, I need, I need everything that this has to offer always forever. I mean, that's a good set to buy into. Between yeah. you know the chases being relatively, you know, if you pull four or Beta Ray Bill, like maybe Thunderstrike, I guess. Um, and then the Colossal Boosters, you know, so not a bad set to buy into. It was a weird set to buy into when you're, like, you're starting where I did and everything else. Because up to that point, I hadn't bought a lot of, like, bricks and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, yeah. It gave so, you a weird idea of what a brick distribution would be. Yeah. Yeah. Was, it was like, yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. weird. Super, yeah. Very, very strange distribution whenever it has a super booster included like that. That's where I think Wonder Woman did a good job because I think that was just like Thor. They had a big rules change, not as big of a rules change, obviously way bigger. Um, but it was very new player friendly that if you bought a ton of that set, you were you were rewarded, I would say. Uh, I which was nice. I love the Wonder Woman set. Um, um, yeah, big fan. I, I'm not the biggest fan that there's no Invincible, but what they did with the set in general is is great. <laughs> I love that every single generic is a sidekick. I love that you can basically create every single generic with, like, leadership on another character. I mean, there's a lot of fluidity in this set. There's a lot of pieces that that I like. So my only complaint is there's, like, what, 11-plus Wonder Womans in it? Yeah, yeah. We're kind of like Wonder Woman, Diana Prince, everything. Yeah, it's insane. And people uh, made fun of the Deadpool set for doing that because there was, like, nine or ten Deadpools and. X Force. Well, I mean, if you count the chases, and there's way more, but still, like, there was an insane amount of Wonder Woman's. Chad, you've played Hero Clicks for a good couple of years now, about five years. What is the favorite thing that you get out of the game? Like, what's what do you like the most about Hero Clicks? Honestly, it's a lot of the people. I mean, it's just fun to talk to other nerds. Honestly, like, it combines things that I like. I've played war games and tabletop games for, like, ever, and this kind of combines that that nerd knowledge of, like, comics and things like that with a tabletop game. And even people who don't, like, know comics, they're still like, oh, that's that character, and they do that thing, you know? It's like, it just, it combines the things that I like the most, basically. 
Awesome. Heroclix did this for me. I don't know if it's done it for you, but I, uh, I read comic books, but when they would make a figure and I was just totally unaware, and if I like liked what they did, you know, I would have to go track down the comic and read it. Was there ever a figure that you saw or played that you were like, I want to know what that person is from and like read a comic or whatever from it? A lot of, of what if and else worlds. When those two came out, I went and grabbed uh, a bunch of trades. Um, could you name one from Elseworlds and one from What If? That would kind of be like your favorite trades that you picked up from that, or like storylines, I guess. Uh, hmm. that's that's a, that's that's a tough. You, you're going tough with it. You're going tough. Thank um, you. we ask the real questions here. <laughs> We're at it, it really is. It really is. <laughs> I honestly can't think offhand. I I think the biggest thing What I've got me into a lot stronger was. I had read, I had started reading Runaways when mm. it first started, but I never actually finished it. And what if got me able to finish Runaways, um, which is fantastic. If you read the original, original story arc for Runaways, it's absolutely just bonkers good. Okay. Nice. And then, uh, The Nail is one of the big ones I read with, uh, with, with Elseworlds. Okay. Which was basically the world where Superman never existed. So, truly a better world, one one I can get behind. Yeah, the uh, thing that I love the most out of Elseworlds though was was planetary. Oh yeah, I've already read that and everything, but like, if you haven't read planetary, it is fantastic. Okay, so we got. We have our Runaways, our Nail, and then our Planetary Recommendations. Those are your reading recommendations. I expect everybody to read those and then have a report on my desk by next Monday. Thank you all. Uh, no, sweet. I know I read whatever the Wild West story was, and then I was instantly disappointed that there wasn't a Blue Beetle, Booster Gold, uh, Guy Gardner, and, like, several other characters yeah. that were in that story. In that I was kind of... I was kind of disappointed in general with Elseworlds and and uh, What If because they could have been so much bigger. I, I think um, what Empire is looking to be is what What If and Elseworlds should have been, where it yeah. looks like a lot of wacky randomness pulling from all over the universe, all that stuff. That's my, that's what we wanted, and then instead we got yeah. My two favorite Elseworlds, I had to go back and buy though older figures for. Because my favorite Marvel, like, Elseworld or alternate universe is Age of Apocalypse, which I love okay. and have loved from from the beginning of time. And then for DC, uh, I don't think anything beats Red Sun. I think I agree with you there. I, I really can't think of any other DC alternate universe that beats Red Sun. Red Sun is just so good. Uh, Flashpoint is good, but Red Sun is better. Well, Flashpoint isn't really a, an alternate. To me, that's not like an alt. That's okay. Well, we're messing with the timeline, and then we're resetting. Because cause Flashpoint, they use Flashpoint to reset the timeline, basically. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas sure. Elseworld, uh, like Red Sun is its own entity entirely. And it it's basically kind of the start of their real, like, we can do this. We can do other stories with our characters that people will still like. I think just because DC has always been so messy with what's canon, what's not canon post crisis, all like all that stuff that that's where DC shines the most is when they just say people understand the idea of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, whatever. Now let's put them into a different world and see how that works because that's yeah. when I've had the most fun reading anything DC, honestly reading or, or watching for sure. All I care about is that Batman is in it. Like, I know what Batman is and what Batman should do. And it should be like, hey, I'm Bruce Wayne. Now I'm Batman. Like, just do that and have him punch some people. <laughs> and I, I'm probably okay with the movie in, in general. Like, okay. or the comic or anything like that. Like, like, who wants to read a Punisher comic where the Punisher isn't just killing mass quantities of people? Right. No one needs an inside Punisher retrospective book. Like no one's asking for that. We just need Like it. I loved I loved the Netflix series. Oh yeah. But it spent too much time humanizing him. 
well, and trying to say that, like, well, he's got all these issues. Yeah, we know he has the issues. We're not watching it for the issues, though. Yeah, we're watching to see him do the, his war roar and, and kill some people. Like, that's what it's about. Like, Daredevil, that's where we want to see the humanistic nature of man and whatever come through. That's what Daredevil should be, right? Yeah. We exactly. don't need that in Punisher. Um, I think I think they if, failed the most with Iron Fist. Well, we're getting a little, a little too far off with uh, – Hero clicks here. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it back. We're gonna bring it back. This is a good it's a good tangent podcast, and I hope people are enjoying it. Chad, there's several different formats in Hero Clicks. Now, what what is your favorite? Are you and by formatting like you know 300 modern, basic, or sealed, or building bigger with like 400, or dare I say it, skirmish, battle royales, etc. Like, what is your favorite format to play? So. It's kind of two things. I either want to play something really random, and the stuff I make, because I run events in my area, the stuff I make, like, first of all, I cut out all the stuff. I, I try to make it so that people will play fun teams. It's like, you have to build a theme team. You have to do this and that. I, I want to play something where it's like, okay, here are your stipulations. Because if you don't have some kind of, like, goal in mind, I have way too much stuff to try to build a team. Like, right. I, I need you to narrow it down. So that's one of them. And then other than that, I love sealed. Like, I absolutely love sealed. What was your favorite set to play sealed with? Uh, well, now I got to look at sets because it, it's really with sealed. It's one of those things where it's all about balance to me. Like, mm-hmm. because you don't want a set where it's like, well, you pull that figure. Everything is over. Like, I think. That Superior Foes was a really good set to play sealed on. Okay. Because even if you pulled a chase, for the most part, it, it doesn't mean you just won automatically. Now, if you played like, if you played like Ares or Morlin, yeah, that's probably gonna, that's probably gonna have a, a bad day for you. But even then, they're not great. In, in yeah, sealed, they, they are, like, they are a lot better, but they're not good figures, you know, like, and that's, you know, no offense. I know you're a big animated fan, but like JLU and Batman the Animated Series, I did not enjoy playing sealed with those sets. If someone pulled Dark Side, it was like, well, cool, interesting. Vitez didn't really um, have that though. No, Vitez yeah, was an it's, awesome sealed that is set. True. The biggest it, problem in Vitez is if they pulled Hawkman, Hawk Girl. It's so low though. To to me, just the point values being so low. Is, I mean, uh, Fufo is the worst. Fufo is way worse. Yeah, I didn't play any sealed of that set though. Like, I I don't have a scope, but yeah, I do agree that was way worse. I also think, and this this might not be a popular opinion because there are a lot of people that didn't like this set in general. I think Earth X is a great sealed set. I love that set. I love it. Everything but the Spider Man part. I loved Earth X. Loved so, all of it. The thing is, like that Spider Man was is kind of easy for people to get. You know, mm-hmm. the biggest problem in that set, in my opinion, was Loki because he's just strong. Oh, he's than he be. yeah. And if you play it now, I don't see how anything will be Stegron. Yeah, because Stegron now that oh, has with the real power change. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Stegron is just because the the biggest problem with Stegron that I always had was he pushed off his empower to do the double power action. Yeah. Um. And that was just such a lame thing. Yeah, you really push off like his his best click. Yeah, so no, totally. I loved loved Stegron. I think him in a sealed, and I did like Earth X in sealed as well because there were those lower rarity Luke Cage, King Britain, Black Knight um, type figures that you could at least sort of build a team around. Heck, even the Black Panther. Um, and then the Union Jacks were all great. All that stuff. And uh, Vulture, Vulture was still good in sealed, but it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the same thing because you couldn't guarantee you had the the bones for the rest of the team. And like like you said, the chases weren't overpowered in Earth X, um, which was good. For the most part, another good one was Captain America and the Avengers. There's a couple figures in there, yeah, that are stupid strong. You can't get away from it. It's always going to happen in every set, but yeah. There's a good balance of really playable figures through that entire set. Yeah, the commons and uncommons are strong. The rares are pretty strong. My, I'm only salty about it because I had really terrible sealed with that set. I played in like five pre-releases. 
I only pulled one super rare. Um, it was Machine Smith. I still somehow won with that. Oddly enough, he was a strong enough super rare to be able to win, which was cool. But, um, yeah, that, that set did not do me good. Sadly, which is really messed up, but it, it did me pretty dirty and sealed. Chad. So, no, go ahead. So I only won with CAV because I pulled Zeke Stain. Okay. And everybody's like, well, he's not the greatest in the world. He isn't, unless you pull Josiah X with him, who makes him reduce penetrating damage. Was was that the beginning of your love relationship with Josiah X? It wasn't the beginning. I enjoyed the con- the truth oh, from, okay. That's from that. Sure. But like when they added him to the game, yes. Because okay. he was on my Super Scroll team. And he made that just spiffy. Just spiffy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, people know I like Super Scrolls mostly because when I first saw them, I'm like, that's nuts, but I didn't understand the potential. Then I saw Chad played them, and then I was like, okay, I'll play with this, but I still didn't win with it. So clearly, clearly you cannot beat a master at his own game. Not that I played against Chad with it. But this is why we can't have nice things. That is, yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, no, it's like, as soon as you like played that and won with that, I was like, right, I'm going to go buy some Super Scrolls. And then I, Lost, I, biffed, it, biffed it in I, top eight. I think I got six super scrolls just straight off the bat. I was like, oh, <laughs> all these, that's fine. Dude, like, I, ah, it's such a good figure. It really is. And it can't quite survive. I don't think it can quite survive nowadays um, in modern, just with the insane amount of outwits. Bothers me a lot. I, though the I Pulse think... Wave change helps them a lot, I think. Only being able to take one damage from Pulse Wave is pretty huge. Because I had... Quite a few super scrolls get single pulse wave and just I, deleted. I think it's got a lot of potential still. And yeah. you gotta still keep in mind that what else has Warrior? Guy Gardner. Ferdinand. What? Uh what's, what's the biggest warrior pick? He he flies in the air. Nah. You tell me, man. Sky Tyrant. Sky Tyrant. Oh yeah, does he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Sky Tyrant is yeah. He flies in the air. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Secret Six isn't on my mind as much as it should be. Probably, it's big threat, big time threat. Yeah, that would be sweet. Um, do you wish that choosing Invisible Woman with Super Scroll would give them TK? It would be too strong. Do I you wish? So? Yeah, of course yeah. I wish, but that would just be broken. But that was always my. My thought whenever I played them, I was like, gosh, I would kill for some telekinesis on this team. I they mean, have. That's, that's what a spin ring is for. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But now right. equipment is just a bad life choice. I think so, too. I don't think you should waste time equipping. So speaking of that, why don't we just give us the rundown of the team you played in Kentucky, this backwoodsy state of uh, fried chicken, and then kind of tell us, uh, obviously you won, but. Tell us how it worked out for you and everything and what you learned from playing it. So, Latveria team, obviously. Uh, my bonus is plus 10. The only map that I took, even though people yell at you for doing it, is I only took one map, Latverian Village. And, of course, I had the uh, the location bonus because it's free. Mm-hmm. Three light objects. And the important thing with the light objects is where you place them. Obviously, if your opponent has, like, Scarab or something like that, you need to put them basically in the, your opponent's deployment zone. You don't want an object near you. Like, mm-hmm. it's that simple. Nobody's equipping anything on my team. Nothing like that is happening because, let's face it, Scarab can ruin everybody. Um, so it's Doom the Annihilating Conqueror because he's what makes it a Latvarian team because he needs the keyword shenanigans. Two Dark Phoenixes, two Charge Flashes, a TK Flash, Molecule Man, High Evolutionary, Brainiac at 10, and Doombot. The High Evolutionary is at low dial as well. Now, for the two charge flashes, both of those do have to be 30 points, but the TK flash is 20 points. Okay. So that puts you at 300 exactly. Sideline, I had uh, DJ Doom, Lord Doom, Sorcerer Doom, and Doom, as well as two Black Vulcans, Green Arrow, Gorilla Grodd, and Brainiac. Now, if you play like me, because I'm just a terrible person in general, you will never remember to bring in a trouble alert ever for any reason. So that didn't happen in any of my games. Even though, like, Doom missed six attacks in a row, I still forgot. Oh, geez. Yeah. I, I still forgot to go, hey, I could bring in, you know, 
somebody to do things. It might be a smart thing to do, but no, not for me. Um, so I never brought those in. Annihilating Conqueror is never a figure that I would use. He is literally there just to make it a Latvarian team. I was about to say, yeah. Yeah, I switched him out every single game. Um, and there is about a 90% chance that I'm going to switch to Doom. There's about a 9% chance that I'm going to switch to Sorcerer Supreme. And there's like a 1% chance that I would go with anybody else. And there are a lot of people who would argue that and stuff, but you've got Lord Doom, who's awesome. It makes it so people can't generate bystanders, right? Yep. But I have plus 10. Yeah, you have way too many figures on your team. So, so. It's probably not going to do anything. Also, the main generating team right now is the animal team using maggots. And this is my opinion. This is what I found from playing against maggot teams. Limiting them to three actions is more important than making them not able to generate a maggot. Okay. Because it's move, like maybe do something with somebody, and then in, they generate one maggot that can attack. Like it, it really, really hurts that team to only have three actions. They need that four. Um, but yeah, doom almost every single time. And you just leave him back, like, three actions is hard, because when people play Doom against me, playing my team changes tremendously, and it it's not easier, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> three actions is definitely very different than four. It is. Yeah, I mean, people got, ever since that leadership change, it just became a four-action game, you know? Yeah. Not even to mention uh, what's-her-face, Power Woman or Fates, which don't really see that much play, so it just instantly became a four action game plus autonomous, you know, so people got spoiled on actions and that's why it was such a big deal when 1776 was around and now, now doom because he's not a worry anymore, but yeah. Yeah. Doom to me is better than 1776. Uh, after the, ch- yeah, I would agree. No, even before the change. Really? Why is that? Doom shuts down autonomous actions for the most part. From across the board. Okay. Because he says that you can take one cost of action for every hundred points, basically. Even though autonomous actions don't count against your action total, they're still costed actions. Okay. Then yeah, that is big. I got you. So, you just have three actions, period. So, a Pog team that's depending on Autonomous, they can't. It's it's a pretty rough shutdown. Um, the team in itself is basically just a bunch of good stuff. If you don't know that Dark Phoenix at this point is good, I, I can't help you. There's nothing I can say that would, would make this okay. The Flash is great. The important thing, though, is that you have to have those light objects so that he can actually charge and punch somebody and then charge and right. use an object. Molecule Man, again, probably top three best figures in the set or in the, in the game right now. Like, Molecule Man is so good with the potential to have ten barrier down in one turn. I would say Molecule Man is borderline just oppressive or oppressive because it's when when he barriers and does the free thing it's like damn i there's nothing i can do it's uh there's not a lot of prevalent characters that have move through blocking i don't think and then yeah he just he's insane for 30 points he's crazy well, he's also power cosmic yep and he has outwit yeah i mean and stealth stealth outwit which is nice too for himself i mean it's Makes a smoke cloud under himself if he needs to, and then, like, you can't target him. It's tough. Yeah. Power I mean, Cosmic lets him, uh, whatever, potentially keep doing it turn after turn. I mean, he gets to keep doing it turn after turn for free, which is the risky part, right? But can potentially also turn after turn, do it with costed barrier and that. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Insane. Um, high evolutionary. Uh, I mean, that penetrating damage, three penetrating damage with an 11 attack for 30 points. And then he has prob on top of I, that. 
when I saw like high Evo style, um, there's some other person who's like a 50 point, you know, three click stop click, but they have like impervious instead. I was like, what kind of world is, cause this is what makes, you know, like what made Wolverine good, right? He was super cheap. He had great offensive capability and then he couldn't even be one shot right away. And then high Evo here running shot, pen blast, prod, double bolts with great reach and cosmic energy is insane. I, I can't believe this is a 30 point. I mean, I can't believe this is what a 30 point figure is nowadays. And it's you hit him wild. onto his stop click. Right. When he goes from outwit. ESD to, yeah, like, Invincible Super Sense is outwit. And it's like, geez. Stats don't change. I mean, they get better, actually. So, like, it's wild. Yeah. Wild that this is 30 points right now. It's wild that him, Dark Phoenix, the Flash is like, when when someone looks at your team, they're like, oh, man, he's got nothing over 100 points. And it's like, why would you pay over 100 points? Look yep. what's so much better. I want you to know that while I was playing... Brainiac killed two firstborns. Really? Yeah. Who? Am I missing something on firstborn that firstborn is being played? So There's- firstborn is good, but it's very dependent on the team. This yeah. guy's team, he was not ready. He was he was not used to playing like a meta tournament. So I oh, I, dude. I understand that completely at the beginning. But I mean, he had a decent team. It was two firstborns, which is a strong figure. There's no way around that one. Like. It's a strong figure. His problem, though, is until he steals energy, he does not have a move and attack. He's got no move. See, for me, no no move and attack. 90 points. I yeah. guess for him, 180 points. That's So he moved those up. Well, I was able to get Brainiac close enough, and I rolled a 5. And they oh, took gosh. one pin damage, which got rid of their, their tele- phasing teleport. Mm-hmm. And he put us on King's Tomb. Which Brainiac's bread and butter is King's Tomb. Why? Oh, really? He won map against a plus 10 or a plus whatever. I guess it would have been three or something. Look, I can't win map. I lost map a majority of my games. Do you, are you a fan of the plus three cap for map roll or no? Um, honestly, in the games that we played, I would have probably only been a plus three most of the time anyway. So it oh, was, okay. it was fun. Like most people are playing about seven right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Brainiac, I rolled a five, knocked him off that ability. Uh, then the next turn, I was able to shoot one, get it to its stop click, because I had Pensai, because I had Sorcerer Supreme in that one. Um, so I Pensai, got him to a stop click. Brainiac did it again, he hit another five, killed that firstborn. Then I shot the other firstborn, and then the next turn, Brainiac rolled another five. Like, That's so Brainiac gross. just like... It's gross, it's awesome. It, it was disgusting, it's like... <laughs> My best thing to say to anybody is do not take your opponent, if he has Brainiac, to any map that has elevation. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's, it's simple as. It's so good, and you don't think it's going to happen, and then it does, and you're like, wow. Wow. But, no, the team, the team plays very well. It's a bunch of, like, just throwing stuff out there, like – Go ahead and attack this so that the Dark Phoenix can come in. That's that's always going to be one of the things. Please, mm-hmm. please attack this. But everything you have can it, – it's just so cost-effective. Even yeah. the Doombot is awesome. I didn't think it was going to be awesome, but at the very least, I can use the Doombot to carry Brainiac farther than Brainiac can move by himself. Yeah. But he also has running shot energy explosion because that's – not good or anything. Or if I really want to and you attack Doom or whichever Doom I have out, I can then just, like, pass it off onto the Doom bot on a 4+. plus. Yeah. I, I mean, think the Doom bot's great. I think the Doom bot's, like, absolutely one of the best generics. It sucks these two clicks, but I think he's amazing. I've always liked, I, I always liked the Doom bot. He would be absolutely beyond wonderful if he was just one more click. Oh, yeah. For and sure. they could make that a naked click with like ones straight down. Like yeah. give him, you you could make it nothing, but just that would make that Doom bot just perfect. Yeah. What was your hardest uh, game of the day? Uh, or what's the team you don't want to play against with this? Well, both. So the the two games I lost because I was three and two going into into single elimination. Oh, okay. 
So one game I lost, I was playing Alex Kuz, and basically I lost math, and we both had teams where, and I say we both had teams, but right now everybody has a team where it's Alpha Strike based. Like almost everybody, if you, winning map is probably one of the most important things in the game at mm-hmm. this moment. Um, and he won map, even though I had plus three over him, because why would I? It's the way it'd be, yeah. And it was just a, a series of unfortunate events from there. Uh, and I, I did the things that I could do, and it just did not turn out well. And he was playing, like, another Latveria team, just a different variant. I mean, it's a strong team, and there's so many ways to build it. Because Annihilating Conqueror lets you do whatever you want. Or any of the other dooms let you do whatever you right. want. Like it's 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 a pretty pretty great thing there. And then I played the other one that I uh, I lost to was Jay Major, and he had a mystical team uh, using again dooms. And uh, <laughs> he crit missed shooting my Phoenix, my Dark Phoenix, and my Dark Phoenix had all three. Latveria village pogs to mastermind on to found it. <laughs> so he uh, brought dude. in Black Vulcan, who energy exploded the Phoenix and killed the Latvarian pogs and the Phoenix. And it's Ooh. just like, well, that's awesome. Ooh, so my spicy. other one, my other one, race out it missed, and I tried to theme prob the miss on that one, and he rolled a six with Svalst, which stops me from using prob and did one penetrating damage. <sighs> And I'm like, well, Ouch. that's how this game is going. That's and that's cold. the game where I missed six in a row oh. with, uh, with Doom. Two turns in a row. Like, just, nope. So that game was just fated to lose. Like, I, I completely accept that. I, I did, I did not play well. Uh, I didn't know exactly what Faust was able to do. But at the same time, like, the dice were like, no, this is not going to happen regardless of what. And he had like 30 probs because, it's a mystical team. Mystical, you know I mean? yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's the way it is. I love that Faust, honestly. Um, that Faust is fantastic. Big, big if, fan. Oh. If you are listening to this and you have not checked out that Faust, you need to read that Faust. Yeah. And just Cry be aware of that. You, you have to be aware of that. If you see that on your board, you cannot. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. And that, that Faust is uh, Fausty. It is. Dude, it is. It's... Fa- I I think WizKids did a did a good job, and this is the Wonder Woman, the latest Wonder Woman set Faust we're talking about here. But on whenever your opponent uses Perplex, Outwit, or Probability Control, you roll a d6. Uh, I forget what it is, but it's like a six. You deal them a penetrating damage, and then some other bad stuff happens. I think on a one, they get to use it twice though. That's like the one can blow back in Faust's face. Let me just read the. Yeah, on a one, they get to use it twice. A four or five. They can't use it at all. And a six, it does one pin after resolutions. Yeah. And they can't use it. Yeah. My big question becomes, like, how exactly does that work for theme prob? I assume I assume I would still have to burn another theme prob, but they could do it again. Right. You can't use Yeah. They can't use it, but someone else could, I'd imagine, would be allowed. Like, um, and yeah, and Faust... But like, if they use it point, again, then... He just gets to roll again. He does get to roll again. No, that's true. He gets to roll <laughs> it for every it's instance. Just like, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's wild. Um, no, he's great. He's stealth. You know, he free place four squares away. Um, and he's outwit, yeah, pensai, outwit, prob, enhancement, mystics. Yeah, uh, he's fantastic. They love this. Like what thirty points is nowadays is insane. Uh, so yeah, well, awesome. What yeah. was uh, what was this? Was this was this your first in person tournament? Since no, uh, no, I played okay. a couple of weeks ago up in Columbus, and I won that one as well with the same team. Well, I, I say almost the same team. So uh, Jay Solomon built the team. Um, him and, and Adam Friedman hammered it out into the perfect form that it is now after Jay kept playing with it and playing with it and playing with it. And then I had to make a tweak because there was a firestorm on the sideline, and I had I replaced it with another black, black Vulcan. Oh, so sure, yeah. I now claim that it's a completely different team because of course, it, of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's it's not the same team, right? You I, I you were, you made it your own. You made it. Yeah, your own. I, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. The figure that I've never called in and will probably never call in is it, it's different it, now. It's different, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's not his team. His team didn't have <laughs> too much. All yeah, right. it's different. Uh, no, the team is fantastic, awesome. though. It's it's 
it can be tricky, especially if, like me, you can't win map. Like, it really wants to win map. Oh, absolutely. I think that's everything. Everybody right now. Everybody right right now. (laughs) Right. Everybody wants to win map. I still think the most important thing, uh, that you can put on your team is your map, is map choice. I, I don't think that'll ever change for me personally. I think the map is like, will always make or break whatever happens. I think map choice is super important, but going first is super more important. Okay. I, I can see, why? But to me, if they wanted man, to balance this is, game, which yeah. they don't want to at no. all, uh, it should be that if you go first, your opponent picks map. I think yeah, I agree that picking map and going first is is tough. Especially, it would be it wouldn't be as tough if they made more maps that weren't completely symmetrical. I think Correct. symmetrical maps is the worst part of this game. Right. Oh my well, god, I, I agree with you completely. Right I like, cannot stand symmetrical maps. It's like, which side do you want of this exactly the same map? It doesn't matter which side you pick because it's the same. Even well, the ones that are slightly different, it's like, yeah. well, your opening is over here rather than yeah. one square over. And it's like, that, no, that's, that's what kills me when someone's like, do you want map? And you're like, looking at it, I'm like, it's the same. And it's like, well, actually, there's this piece of block. And I'm like, oh, dude, it's the same thing, bro. Yeah. There's no, yeah, side, the side choice of map just doesn't matter. Second, second player is still, uh, in a big Huge world of her. It, it sucks. Yeah, it really sucks. Yeah, the most important role is the one after you shake your opponent's hand. It's, it's terrible. Um, yeah, that's the metagame right now. And that's, that's fun. Are you excited for Florida to shift the conversation a little bit? Uh, I am mostly because I get out of Ohio. I mean, that's a big part, right? But and no, it's going to be nice to be around a bunch of people to see a lot of clicks going down, a lot of a lot of things happening, a lot of playing, and just just a weekend of of forced fun. Absolutely, absolutely. I uh, Simeon's not going to be able to make it. I'm going to be able to make it. Flying down with the Phoenix Nest boys. Uh, I'm excited. I love it. I. This is going to be oddly enough the second time. Are you going to be on the actual Phoenix? Like, are they taking you on the bird? Oh, that's what I hear. I hear that once you get like five or more of them together, they, they pull out their Phoenix Nest jerseys and they, um, I think Ed actually has a little flute that he plays. And then these robots come out of nowhere. The, the Van Hollen bot, the Bolin bot, and then, you know, the Gretchen S bot and all those, they form this like one Phoenix Megazord. And that's what we fly, fly on whenever they have to travel, which is why they have to have so many members. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little too far. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. I People probably lost the uh, Power Rangers analogy a little bit there. Yeah. No, or we're old take... people like me went to Voltron. I mean. Oh, sure. I mean, to I, mean fair, I know Voltron... you said Zoid, but even when somebody says that, I still go to Voltron. Yeah. You know, I. Uh, and I that's love that's Power as... Rangers. Like, I can't that's lie. Not as, that's not as old of a thing as you think now because of the Netflix show. There's quite a lot of, of young youngins. That enjoy Voltron. The Netflix show was actually pretty good. I, uh, I, enjoy I enjoyed it. it a lot. Yeah, it yeah. was good. They are, uh, sadly, they suffer from, like, the fan base suffers from being young, which means they're the most annoying people to see at conventions uh, ever. They're right up there with, like, Steven Universe, whatever else, My Hero Academia fans. They are some of the most annoying fans to ever see ever. But the show is I good. enjoy Steven Universe. I mean, are you trying to say it's a bad show? I'm not saying it's a bad show. I'm saying the fans are are very annoying. I hope Tyler Spees doesn't listen to this. He might, he might. He does listen show. to this, actually. Um, or at he least he used to. Uh, no, I, I've told him this before in person before. Um, right after I beat him in rock teams, uh, with a monster theme team. Uh, <laughs> that is all true, but I don't, I didn't mean to blow Tyler up. No, I, I talked to him about it and I think it's an interesting show. I've actually made, um, Rose Quartz's pink sword for somebody one time. Um, and it was a really fun build to do because the, the handle was very flowery and it let me kind of be creative with the design. But, um, the fans are just annoying. It's just, and I love My Hero Academia, but the fans are annoying. You know, like that's just, that's just the way it is. And to some degree, like, what's it called? Marvel fans can be annoying at conventions too, because whenever I'm Captain America, all I get is, you know, that's America's rear end and that just, that gets really tiresome all day. So what I'm trying to say is, um, you the wish you had my rear end. I do you? actually, uh, like that, that makes me very self-conscious because I'm very much, um, well, you're also a white guy, but I mean, I, I'm just a very, uh, white boy and then I got the rear end of the white boy. So it's, it's really tough when 
they put all this pressure on you to have America's rear end and you can't support it. You can't be cheeked up on a Saturday. Proportionally, proportionally, mine is still very large, but it is significantly smaller than it was. I saw that. You walk too much, Chad. What are you walking so much for? uh, I'm trying to get away from, from my life. You just gotta keep walking away from your problem. You should, you should probably walk out of Columbus or out of Ohio, wherever you live at in Ohio. I would, I would leave Ohio if Dayton. I had the choice. Come on, Dayton. Dayton. The, That's the a most happening race car place ever. Place? Yeah. No, it's not. It's, there's nothing it's not? in Dayton. Oh. It's Dayton. actually where the Wright brothers are from, but that's. Oh. I don't, I don't even know if you know who the Wright brothers are. Only Dayton, <laughs> they made the only first, Dayton cares about them. <laughs> they made the first like airplane, right? Like, yeah. They made yeah. the, yeah. I know who the Wright brothers are. I passed, you know, third grade history or whatever. Like, I know the Wright brothers. All right. This is awesome. I, mean, I, I still guess. assume you're like six, so I don't know when third grade happens. That, that hurts. That hurts, Chad. That hurts. I'm getting pretty old, Chad. I don't know if you know this, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty, I'm going to be 23 this year. I'm, I feel really old. I mean, that, you that, should. Yeah. That makes me feel ancient. The fact that I, I'm this old and then here we are. Like, I feel, I feel incredibly ancient. At least you, you can know? legally drink away your sorrows. So. No, oh, I don't like doing that. Water's, water's good enough for me. That's. <laughs> There's not enough alcohol for his sorrows is what he's saying, folks. <laughs> oh, yikes. Yikes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, the bank took the ranch the other. No. Um, awesome. So Florida is going to be happening. It's it was like July 23rd, 24th, 25th. I'm heading so, down next next weekend. Oh, are you gonna do a vacation a little bit? We're, yeah, we're spending the first half with my in-laws, and then I'm gonna be at the uh, turning for the second half. Is this gonna be a real meet the fuckers type in-law no, my, situation? No, my uh, my in-laws live in Sarasota. They're good. Okay, people. awesome. I um, you didn't go to any of the parks down there? Universal Disney. Just hang so out. I wanted to go to Disney um, just for a day and go to the Star Wars park, mm. but. You can go and walk around the park, but, like, every single attraction you have to, like, book in advance, and they're all completely booked, like, forever, that because they're only letting so many people in. So it's like, if I can't do any of the, like, things, like, there's, like, a lightsaber thingy and a robot thingy, and, like, you can go to the cantina, and, you like, you can do all these things, but, like, you can't actually do them because they're all booked. That does suck. Um, to do a little bit of Clicks Cup news, however, uh, slash real life news, Rise and Fall is subject to not come out until the foreseeable future because of shipping delays. It's out of WizKids' hand. They don't know what's going on. They don't know what's happening. I had someone in our Discord server ask us, what's the real reason Rise and Fall is delayed? The real reason is it's on a boat somewhere and like, it's just, there's a ton of stuff that's delayed right now, actually. If you pay, more attention to than like just hero clicks you'll you'll know a ton of stores are waiting for product to ship for board games action figures all sorts of stuff so with that being said uh we don't know when rise and fall is going to be released so it's not going to be legal for the clicks cup no matter what if they can somehow get product they're going to try to do it for battle royales but i believe they have already officially said team sealed is going to be wonder woman and personally uh, I like the Wonder Woman set for sealed. I really don't like the 60 point slash 40 point captains. Those are probably my least favorite thing that in Grodd to pull in sealed. Um, and then of course, Superman can be quite the bummer, but Chad, how do you feel about, uh, doing team sealed with Wonder Woman? Uh, I'm happy they could find enough Wonder Woman for it. Yeah. But I think sealed Wonder Woman is pretty great. Cause again, most of the chases aren't just going to run the game. There's other figures in the set that can do things. Like, you're not just lost. There's there's always something you can do. Even if it's just like, well, I pulled two ally soldiers. I mean, that's good. Like, Dude, he is. I mean, pff, running shot enhancement? Are you kidding me? 20 German soldier is good. People are like, well, there's he's only got nine attack. It's like, nine attack? I don't care. He's got three damage. He's 20 points. Hey, a nine, a nine attack can hit a 22 defense. Yeah. 21 defense, excuse me. Bad math. Bad math. But no, so. I'm I'm also in the dissenting opinion where I am perfectly happy that Rise and Fall was delayed. Would I have liked it to come out? Yes. yes. But too many sets, too fast. I need them to now delay Empire as well. Like, mm-hmm. you need to just straight up say, hey, 
Rise and Fall is going to come out when it comes out, and then Empire will be like three months later. Yeah. I honestly hate it when sets do come out in such a quick succession because it was like, oh, we got Fufo in February, right? And then uh, right yep. instantly before that in January, we had House of X and everything. I was just, I was not liking it. I did not enjoy that close to sets being released. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, excited we, for what it's going to be. Well, I mean, you had, you had House of X in January, then, Fufo in, in February, then Wonder Woman was at the end of March. I mean, it's just like never any story. Yeah. All right, that is all we had for news. I'm going to go ahead, give us a quick Jedi Legend tip of the week, and then I'm going to send us out of here. Jedi Legend writes in, hindering and water no longer affect movement. For some reason, the new hindering requires a green and white checkered lines, uh, it also still hinders line of fire. And, uh, yeah, doors and windows. Forget, forget about them. Are you happy doors and windows are gone? Or what was your feeling towards doors and windows, Chad? Uh, I think they were perfectly fine. The problem is they called them doors and windows. Okay. What was the, what name change were you thinking? I don't know. They could have called them anything else, but people had this conception where it's like, well, I can climb in a window. Or the window should break when I shoot through it. Like, it's not an actual window. Think of it as, like, a magical force field or, like, there's bars or something. Like, it doesn't have to be an actual window. That's just the name of the effect. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for listening. We had Chad Birds all on. Chad, I'm going to wrap up the show. So, is there any shout-outs that you want to throw out really quick before we say our goodbyes? Uh, I... Guess I could give a shout out to everybody. Tommy Lytle, thank you for running the event in Kentucky. Pretty fantastic. Thanks to all the people who showed up and played against me. Tyler was who I fought in the, uh, in the final. It was a fun game. Eh, that, that covers it. That's good, probably. Awesome. For now. Okay. Well, that was special guest Chad Birdsall. It was good to have him on in the show. Uh, we didn't get to talk too much smack about Simeon, sadly, but now I'm going to round out the show here, guys, with some listener questions since it would have been rude of me to not get to those in the first place first one is on patreon from cody ask what's our typical pre-record ritual uh, i personally just uh, get my notes together set up my cardboard little shell that i've made that has these foam squares on it for my sound and then i'm i'm ready to go i like to grab a water maybe go to the bathroom before the show but that's really about it um he kind of says, do you and Simeon briefly go over topics? Yes, we do. We normally talk for about 45 to 30 minutes before any given show. Um, so if you have listened long enough to know uh, Chris Britton, who was the host about 100 or so episodes ago before Simeon got on, he was my co-host. We were co-hosts together, I guess. Um, we just started. Chris and I, we just like, we got on, hey, bro, it's 7 o'clock, boom, we would start. So me and Simeon go over topics kind of catch up, see what's going on. Um, Cody asks uh, if any one of us specifically sets the topics or if it's mostly off the cuff. So obviously with Hero Clicks, there's a lot of news going on. So we got to cover the news. You know, people do listen to this to stay updated in the world. So they don't have to, you know, go on like Facebook groups or whatever and be like, hey guys, what's up with Rise and Fall? It's like, nope, it's delayed. You know, like we like to, uh, to make sure we cover the news. And then if it's going to be a guest or something, we'll have that worked out a few months in advance or maybe only a week in advance. Honestly, in Chad's case, it was a day or two in advance. I was just like, you know what? We haven't had Chad on. He's a great guy. This win gives us an excuse, like a, a, a good excuse to have him on. Honestly, anytime is a good time to have Chad on. I think it was super fun. So yeah, we, we talk about the topics normally throughout the week, what we want to do. If it's a really light news week, and we kind of just, the week flies by and we didn't pay attention too much. Sometimes we'll uh, we'll talk about whether or not we want to do a hidden gem, value corner, generic gallery, threat redemption, etc. Uh, Cody asks, why can't I handle hot wings? Uh, for that video, uh, we was talking about the Hero Dial H for Hot Ones, the Hero Flix Hot Ones video we did. I want to film another one of those. Um, I've actually tried to up my spice tolerance. And I was actually pretty proud of myself for how well I did during Hot Ones, but I've never been a spicy food guy. I'm a, I'm a salt, salty or sweetie uh, type dude. 
Um, spice was never something where I'm like, why would I enjoy this? It's just burning my taste buds. I, I'm deriving no, no joy out of this, but I do constantly try to eat spicier food to get better at that. Um, and to be fair, in that video, I did kind of want to play it up a little more since I knew Simeon wasn't going to play it up. And I know people watch, you know, people watch videos of people eating spicy food, so they see them react. So that's the whole point. So I, I did kind of, um, you know, up my, uh, my whole non-spice tolerance. And then Cody's final question is, is there a lot of editing involved aside from the sound effects? We do cut out some awkward gasps, um, gaps. So if someone pauses for a long time, maybe if we stutter a lot, uh, sometimes we've edited out entire rants that don't make it to the show um, for better. Trust me, it's for better, not so much for worse. Um, so yeah, but mostly if we have a clean episode, Simi and I can just go through it. Simi will add in the sound effects and it'll be A-OK. -okay. Uh, next up, Chance McCall. Uh, super fan Chance McCall says, if you were put on a reality show where you and five other HeroClix content creators were stuck in a house for three months, who would you pick? This is actually a really tough question. I'm not going to lie. So some of these you may think might not count, but these are my personal picks. Uh, definitely Ed Shelton. Ed Shelton's a guy who I can have a ton of conversations with. Uh, obviously, Edward Shelton is leader of Phoenix Nest slash the uh, slash Dark Logos slash Starting Over Podcast. Man wears many names. Um, but Ed Shelton, cool guy. I've had dinner with him several times. I, I genuinely just enjoy his company. Next up, Scott Porter. I'm going to count him as a Heroclix content creator. He doesn't so much run his own uh, Heroclix channel, so you might think this is a cop-out, but I'm going to count Scott Porter. He'd be a really cool dude. Plus, I could probably get a quick workout in with Scott Porter while we're chilling in the house, which would be pretty sweet. Um, next up, Glass Cabinet Films slash Glass Cabinet Hobbies, a.k.a. Ryan Morgan. He made Heroclix content quite a while ago, but he is the reason that I got into the game. So it'd be cool to, uh, I think that would be a cool one. Next up, I would say Ben Jones. Ben Jones is the host of the Clicks on the Barbie podcast. Uh, you know, he's been a longtime listener of the show, a good supporter, good, you know, just all around cool dude. So I'm like, you know, why not? I would totally wouldn't mind it. And then I don't know if this counts really, uh, but Tom Kerr was a reoccurring guest on the Married with Clicks podcast. Uh, show the meta lab that they would do and i would take jason too uh jason's pretty cool but i i really like tom i've always had good conversations with tom so uh, i quite enjoy him uh let's see what else do we have for more questions we can answer here uh bill asks what came first chicken or the egg i'm gonna say chicken uh hypertime jackson asks what do you think the real reason is that rise and fall is delayed i think the reason they gave is correct because a lot of other people are dealing with that uh, Andy asks, do you have any contact with the original three, or are they all the way out? Uh, in other words, is Hunter ever coming back? And by coming back, he means updating a life, not hosting or anything. Um, you know, for those of you that don't know, for those of you that may have only been listening the last 100 episodes where it's just been me and Simeon, or the last 200 episodes where it's just been Chris and I, and then eventually just Simeon and I, um, you may not know that Dial H for Hero Clicks was first run by these guys, uh, Drew Otterson, Hunter Smith, and Austin Smith. And they were three pretty good friends, and obviously two of them were uh, related, cousins. Um, and they started the show. They did the show um, together. Honestly, all three of them were on the show less than I've been on the show. Uh, so I've had more episodes under my belt than all three of those guys. However, regardless... Uh, they set the groundwork. They they really, you know what, they did the hard work. I'm not going to lie. They they passed the torch and we kept it going and we kept it burning. And, I, and Dial H is bigger than it's ever been. And I'm really proud of that. But I'm very thankful for those three guys for laying the groundwork and making Dial H uh, so it could be what it was. So uh, if you if we are guys curious about these, um, uh, Drew Otterson, I know, is doing a pretty good job. I think he's got a girlfriend. I think he's having good work. Uh, Hunter Smith, I think he is father of two now. He... I believe works at a hospital and I'm not trying to blow up his spot. I do believe he said that on the show before. I believe he's a cardiovascular tech or something like that. Um, and he's happily married. Um, as far as Austin Smith, I don't know. Austin was, I never kept up with Austin. I've never talked with Austin. I did two episodes of Drew Otterson and then I did the 200th episode. If you want to listen to that, we do get Hunter on for that episode and we have a little bit of a life update from him, which is really cool. But those guys are pretty much done playing the game. There's, Nothing that really interests them uh, too much about the game anymore. Hunter uh, still keeps up with the Facebook page. I think he understands that like this show is his baby, 
And the last thing I want to do is like abuse his baby. <laughs> that, that may sound bad. Please don't sound clip that. But, you know, uh, but it's in my hands and it's been in my hands for quite a while now. So I, I do hope Hunter uh, likes what we're doing with the show. I hope he genuinely enjoys the content. Um, and even though he's not totally in all in with hero clicks right now, I, I hope he's getting something out of it. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Andy. And then we had, we had some pretty sweet questions. Uh, Malcolm, I know you asked some questions, but, uh, since Simeon is not here, it wouldn't be, it would not be fair to him to, uh, to answer that question. Uh, I think chance also asked somewhere up here, um, what's like the best oh no andy asked what the best donut is i personally do think it's Krispy cream however there used to be a place made by uh in chamberlain south dakota that was like homemade ma and pa shop donuts that were just amazing and those to me were the best donuts maybe that's my childhood uh but i really love it he also asks what is everyone's favorite burger joint i i personally think culver's wins hands down for the americana burger fries and a shake I think the, the, the burgers are a little greasy, but the shake is one of the greatest shakes in any restaurant ever. I honestly have never had a better chocolate shake than a Culver's chocolate shake. So I, I have to give it to Culver's on that one. So yeah, guys, that is going to be our show. We already did the tip of the week. We already uh, did all of that stuff. So I want to say dial each for hero clicks. You can email us and write questions to us either at gmail.com. So that's dial h 4 heroclicks at gmail.com, all spelled out. Send us an email there. Give us your thoughts and opinions on the show. Uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway here soon. I haven't been able to sell some Fulcums, so we might be doing a giveaway for when we get to 700 subscribers on our YouTube channel. So if you want to be a part of that, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. If not, we're going to do a giveaway no matter what once we hit 700 on YouTube. I'm very, very proud of how YouTube's come so far. You can like us on Facebook and Twitter. Follow us on Twitter, of course, at Dial H4. That's the number four Hero Clicks on Twitter. Facebook, it's Dial H for Hero Clicks, all spelled out. We'll post memes, uh, some funny content, and also if you want to use that as an avenue for how you get your news, you can definitely do that because we try to post the news as soon as we can find it uh, on Facebook. So it's a pretty solid place to get a good news stream if you don't want to be in all the groups and everything else. Dial H for Hero Clicks also has a Patreon. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff on Patreon. We play Bad Samaritan once a week, every single week. And then at the end of the month, people will get extra Patreon rewards for playing Bad Samaritan and doing well. Uh, also on Patreon, we get these custom tokens. I'm going to make some Rise and Fall tokens. So that's a Confidence, Shi'ar Flag, Slice of Cake, Goodie Bag token, a Mimicry, and a Research token. These aren't pogs, but these are tokens you put on people's cards. And I just think it'll add a little bit of flair, especially the Shi'ar Flag token, I think, is very helpful. And the Slice of Cake. Since there's only one Slice of Cake, you know, piece that you get, having more is, is great. So I, I'm excited to get these tokens out to everybody. Uh, of course, we do uh, more tokens than that, and we're going to have some custom Wonder Woman tokens uh, coming pretty soon, and I'm very excited for those to come out. Uh, once again, guys, I want you to... Uh... Oh, and you know, I think Drew Otterson had a birthday recently, so happy birthday, Drew Otterson. You know, a lot of respect, a lot of respect. So yeah, guys, definitely check that out, and if you want to support us, Patreon is a great way to do it, but honestly, leaving a five-star review on iTunes is huge. It really does. It it gets us boosted for people to listen to us, you know, and that's on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, wherever podcasts, wherever you listen. Leaving a review is just huge to make us show up. If you think we are a good show that more people should listen to, then definitely write us a review because then that'll, you know, shoot us up to the top of the list whenever people search for hero clicks as far as podcasts go. All right, guys, that is our show. Once again, we are brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest HeroClick singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. And like always, happy trails.